Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Survival Games mini-series. In this episode, we are going to write the kit system. I got a request in the comments for uh, adding kits, and I figured that since I never really made a video on adding kits, I might as well go ahead and do it right now. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to write a kit class and then we're going to write a bunch of different classes that extend the kit class and then, you know, set them all up. Uh, then we also have to write a kit manager because uh, we need to store a list of all the players and the kits that they're using. Um, and we also need to, like, prompt the player. We need to get, we need to have the ability to get a kit by a name. Um, we need to have the ability to prompt the player because we could do an inventory menu with all of the different um, kits in it and then you know they select one so if you don't really want to have kits if you're gonna use this plugin for yourself and you don't really want to have kits um, that's fine but since a bunch of people do I'm gonna go ahead and show you so let's go ahead and make a um, kit class, and I guess I'll just stick it right here. So this kit class is going to represent ugh, represents a kit. Just I'm just writing a little note there. So this class represents a kit, and it's going to have uh, a bunch of methods. And we're going to make it abstract because. Um, we don't want to directly instantiate kit, we want to instantiate, um, you know, a subclass of kit, so, you know, we could have a different kind of kit. So, we'll go ahead and declare a private ArrayList item stack called items. So we want to keep a list of all of the items, but we also want to have a string called name, because we want to know the name of the kit. We'll go ahead and make a constructor for kit that takes in the name, and then we'll say this dot name is equal to name, this dot items is equal to new array list of type item stack. Okay. So then we'll have a public final string get name return name uh, public final. Um, We'll just do array list item stack get items return items dot clone. Probably want to clone it. Yeah, I think we do. Okay, so uh, what we've done here is we've created uh, both getters. I'm making them final. When you apply final to a method, it means that the method can't be overridden. So if I make a class that extends kit and I try to override the get name method, it won't let me because it's final. And we don't want them to override the get name method. Uh, we don't want them to override the get items method. Um, and then the clone thing is just if we return this exact um, array list of item stack, then you know I could clear the array list and then the kit would have no items in it. But if I return a cloned version, it contains all of the same items. Uh, but if I were to modify the cloned version, it doesn't affect the original one. Not terribly important. We're also going to have a public void apply player P. Um, and I'm just going to write a little note here. Um, so that's the player. But the note that I want to write is can be overridden to... Overridden, overridden, I don't know. Can be overridden um, to apply or to change the player to whom the kit is being applied. So, what this will do is in the kit class, um, this method is optional, but if, um, let's say that there's a kit um, that gives the player a potion effect when they 
when they get the kit, it gives them 10 minutes of jumping power. So then they would override the apply method and have the player, um, they would add the potion effect. But uh, if there was just a potion, or sorry, if there were just a kit that only gave them items and didn't do any kind of a special effect, then they wouldn't have to override the apply method. Uh, the, you know, because it's just by default blank. Um, now, the last thing that we want to do is a, I guess it has to be public, public final item stack, create item stack. This is just a utility method um, that will be called, well, first of all, we're going to have a, down here, public void add item. Actually, we don't even need this. We're just going to call it add item, and then it will take a string called name. Well, no, sorry. First, it needs a material. Material. It needs the amount. It needs the name. Um, and then it needs the lore. So this is just a utility method, because rather than have to you know, do all, create an item and then update the item meta every single time. We're just going to have a really simple method that will create it and then put it in the list of items. So um, we're just going to really quickly say item stack item is equal to new item stack material and amount. So then we're going to say item meta meta is equal to item dot get item meta. Then we're going to say meta.set display name name meta.set lore arrays dot as list lore item dot set item meta to be meta and then items dot add item and then I guess we could just clean that up a little bit Okay, so what we do here is this add item method uh, will go ahead and easily add an item. And we only want to call this from the um, from the subclass of kit. And we're, we'll make a sample kit right now. Now eventually I'm going to put this uh, code on GitHub. I might do it after I finish making this video uh, so that people can contribute um, more things. Until the series is over, I'm only going to be accepting contributions to um, more kits. Uh, but then after the series, if people want to add new features, that would be awesome. Okay, so we have our kit class. And I kind of just want to move this method because it's bothering me. There we go. Um, so now we'll, let's just go ahead and I'm going to make a um, package called kits. Because uh, we could end up having a lot of them. But we're just going to create um, an archer kit. And it's probably better to rename this to be um, archer kit or kit archer. So that you know that it's a kit and not something else. So this is going to go ahead and extend kit. So the first thing that it needs is a constructor. And this is where we're going to do most of the work. So the first thing is kit needs a name. So we're going to go ahead and call the super constructor and the name is going to be archer. Um, then we want to go ahead and add the item. So I can call add item material dot bow. Uh, let's add one bow. The name uh, will be bow and the lore, we don't want, I'm not going to put any lore in it, and we'll just name it Archer's Bow. Um, and you could write other, uh, you could over, overload the add item method, so you could have one that doesn't take in a name if you don't want to give it a custom name, um, or you could have one that doesn't take in the amount and only gives it one, whatever you want to do. So we'll have it add one bow. Oh, and you might want to also have one uh, for the enchantment. Because right now, uh, there's no adding enchantments. So I guess you might want to do that. In that case, we'll go ahead and change string. We'll make lore be a string array. Um, and then we'll also have an enchantment dot 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 called 
enchantments. And then we'll just go ahead and quickly say um, for enchantment, sorry, enchantment e in enchantment item dot add enchantment e. Oh, and it wants the level as well. Oh boy. Come on, you're killing me, bucket. Okay, we're gonna do a simple entry of enchantment and integer. Um, simple entry is a class, I believe. Yes. Okay, so simple entry is just contains a key and a value. So since we need to have the enchantment and the level, we'll just do it like that. So we obviously need to change this to be um, that, and then we want to say entry dot get key to entry dot get value. This part's not terribly important, but just know that we're keeping uh, a list of um, enchantment and integer. We're pairing them together. So I'll show you how that works. Because let's say that to the bow, uh, first of all, we don't want to have... Uh, I guess I probably can't do that. If we don't want to have any lore, then we'll just make an empty string array for the lore. And then... Why is this not working? Okay. And then we'll go ahead and have... New simple entry. Uh, and then for this you would say enchantment integer and then the enchantment that we'll give it is a new enchantment um, uh, that's not the right one Why is this not working? New enchantment. And then I believe that the constructors that it takes. Oh, this is a different enchantment thing. Okay, so we'll just say enchantment dot. Um, so let's say that we want to have, I think there's an infinite arrow infinite and then we want to put it at level one and import enchantment why is this not working okay so then just this okay so final void add item. Okay, just ignore that part, but basically what we're doing here is, um, oh, I see, I was confusing potions with enchantments, that's why, but, uh, so what we're doing here, sorry about that little issue, but we're adding a bow, we're adding one bow, the name of it is Archer's Bow, it has an empty string array for its, um, enchantment, for its lore, and then it has one enchantment, which is infinite arrows at one. And that might be a little bit overpowered, so you could change it if you want. Uh, we'll also go ahead and add um, an arrow, which obviously wouldn't you would only need to have one if you kept the infinite enchantment, but I was just showing that as an example. So let's have 64 arrows, and we'll name it Archer's Arrows. Um, we'll have, I'm not going to put any lore on it. And I'm not going to put any uh, enchantments on the arrows. So this is just a really simple class. And if someone wants to add more items to it, they certainly could. Because um, just a bow and arrows is not great. You'd obviously want to um, add um, armor. But let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, so I guess we might as well just quickly write the kit manager. And I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work, but we're going to have the kit manager. Um, the kit manager is going to contain 
the instances of all of the kits, um, and then we'll have an easy way to get access to them. So, new kit manager, like static kit manager, get instance, return instance. So now, in here, we need a private array list of kit, which we'll call kits. And then we're going to say kits is equal to new, not arena, new array list of type kit. Okay, and then we're going to say kits.add new archer kit. So now, this is going to be where we... Um, add all other kits. So this is where we're going to add all of the other kits. And then we're going to have a public kit called get kit that will take in a name. And I'm going to say for kit kit in kit if kit dot get name dot equals name return kit return not name return null. So that's basically if I give it the name archer then it should return the archer kit. And that's probably all that the kit manager is going to do. Um, so in the next episode, we'll probably have to modify the arena class a little bit to handle the kits. And I'll, I'll have to figure out exactly how that's going to work. But we'll probably also write an inventory GUI that will pop up with a list of all of the different kits. Um, and then you can choose a kit to join. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. And I will see you guys soon with some more uh, survival games and coding. Bye for now.